All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we're going to be looking at the Renaissance. Uh, basically, we're going to be looking at some of the artists, you know, um, we're going to be looking at uh, kind of what happened, what what is a Renaissance and, you know, how the term Renaissance has multiple meanings, okay? So let's look at the objective, analyze again how the term Renaissance has more than one meaning. Uh, we're going to examine the difference between Dark Ages and Renaissance art. And then you're going to create an argument on whether Niccolo Machiavelli has an argument about people. He says specifically something on one of his books about how people are. And we're going to have a little discussion about that. So let's go ahead and start with the warm-up picture. So here is your warm-up picture. Uh, the first question asks you, uh, what do you think these angels are waiting for? Okay, so obviously they're waiting, as you can see from the expression on their faces and things like that. So what do you think they're waiting for? Now the thing is, this painting is very famous. And as you may have noticed, if you look at the top left-hand corner, there's like a foot right there. Um, the thing is, this picture, there's more to it than just these two little angels. Um, but a lot of people have not seen it. So I'm gonna show you what it is right now. Okay, so that's the whole picture. And if you look at the bottom, there's the angels. Um, so the second question is, what do you think makes this painting so famous? Again, not many people notice the whole picture. Um, a lot of people only know about those angels. So what makes this um, painting so famous? What, why do you think it just gravitates to people? Now, some of you guys may have seen these angels in like some of your family members may have it as decor. You know, I've seen it on, you know, tissue boxes and just stickers, things like that. So um, what do you think makes this? painting so famous okay so uh be sure you uh have your response down if you're still writing pause the video but we're moving on in three two one so the aftermath of the black plague basically uh the renaissance was the um uh, consequences of it all right so black death comes the plague goes comes and goes, and then the Renaissance comes, um, as, as well as the decline of the church. Now, you may have remembered from the last video that the church uh, basically turned their backs on people, and people started kind of realizing, like, well, you know what, maybe the church is not as um, big as we thought it was. Maybe that, that's not the only thing in life, you know, because, again, basically the peasants before all there was in life was work and church and um, so now they're that they were denied their last rites and things like that that the people feel like you know what maybe there's more to life than just work and church so the term renaissance literally means rebirth okay now the thing is uh, i'm going to use this explanation later on but i'm going to use it right now as well um when it means rebirth, it means that you're not the same as you were before. Okay, people talk about this, you know, if they've um, quit, you know, alcohol, drugs, and I thought they said they had a rebirth. Same thing if they've gone to a new religion or they have the, a new, new their faith is restored. Um, they call it usually a rebirth because you no, are, no longer are the way you were before. Okay, now the Renaissance started in Italy. Okay, that's the birthplace of the Renaissance. But eventually it spread throughout Europe. Now, the thing is, cities became very wealthy. Because again, remember, before the Black Plague, people were living in kingdoms, things like that. So the lords and things like that, they became wealthy. You know, people were forced to stay, you know, dumb and, you know, working in the fields. Well, now there's good jobs available. 
companies and businesses are starting to compete with one another to get workers so the pay is getting higher the pay is getting higher that means that people are going to spend money the more people spend money the more um companies and businesses are going to be making things and they're going to be selling the stuff and they can hire more workers so cities became wealthier from this now, another reason for the term rebirth is that people kind of look back and go, you know what, that whole thing with the king and queen, thinking that they were the you know, ultimate rulers, that way of thinking is dumb. We need to go back to when uh, it was like back at the Roman and Greek time, you know, where the people had a voice. You know, with the king and queen, it was just about them, who had the power, who had the money, they were the ones who were controlling the, the country. Whereas in the Greek and Roman time, it was the people. The people had a voice. And you know what? This Black Death taught us something, which was we should have a voice in what's going on in our country. So there was a rebirth in not only the politics, but also the art. Now, if you look at these two top pictures, those are Dark Ages um, artwork. Now, you may see that the images are very kind of, you know, two-dimensional. You know, um, you got the Virgin Mary with the, the baby Jesus, things like that. You know, you got angels. A lot of these Dark Age art pieces, um, you really don't hear about the artists who made them because a lot of these artists made it, but they didn't do it for their glory. They did it for the glory of God. So they didn't want to take really credit for it. They don't want to be like, oh, look what I made, look what I made, oh, look how beautiful those things like that. No, it was straight up like I'm making this in honor of God, um, things like that. But in the Renaissance time, it was more like, well, look at the skill I have. So a lot of these painters um, and sculptors and things like that, they were, took pride in their, their, um, in their work. And they made sure that their name was attached to that art piece. Now, like I said, if you look at the top art, it's very bland, right? You might see a little shade here, here, and then that's it. Whereas if you look at the bottom pieces of art, there's different shades in the faces, you know, darker colors, you know, there's, um, look at the cloth, you know, you see, and especially the one with the girl, like, slicing the, the dude's neck, the background um, kind of crimson looking cloth. I mean, it looks so real. And that's what they use. They use different colors and shadows and, you know, make things more realistic. Whereas the other top art isn't very much realistic. You don't see people looking like that all too much. Okay. Uh, so hopefully you can see the difference between the two diff different pieces of artwork in two different eras. So... My question to you is, how does the term renaissance, which again means rebirth, have more than one meaning? So again, think about how I told you. The term rebirth, renaissance, means you weren't like how you were before. So I basically I'm asking you, how are people different? How is life different for the people in the renaissance as it was back in the dark ages? I went through several examples with you. Um, a couple minutes ago about the rebirth. So think about, you know, education. Think about um, the jobs. Think about the artwork, the politics. You know, how has it changed between the Renaissance and before the plague? You know, with the kings and queens and all that stuff. Think about the jobs, the pay, things like that. So how does the term Renaissance have more than one meaning? when it refers to um, the people. Okay, so take a minute, think about it, and um, give your response. But we're gonna be moving on in three, two, one. Now, these are just a couple of the famous Renaissance men. Um, the very first one is Leonardo da Vinci, by far one of the most famous people to come out of this time. Uh, da Vinci is um, was only a sculptor. He was an architect, an inventor, and a mathematician. 
uh, for a person with very little education. He was extremely smart. He is considered one of the true Renaissance men. Okay. Um, Michelangelo, I'm going to kill this name, D. Lodovico Bonarotti Simone. What this guy, simply known as Michelangelo, uh, he was a sculptor, a painter, an architect, and a poet. Now, the thing is, he's most famous for painting the Sistine Chapel. Um, and, you know, this famous piece with uh, God and man, like nearly touching fingers, things like that. That was him. Okay. Raphael Giovanni Santi. He was a painter and an architect. This, his painting is like that girl's, uh, the painting of the two girls. That was his. Um, Sandro Barcelli, he was a famous painter. And lastly is Donatello. Now, Donatello was a sculptor, and he created that sculpture of that little kid you see right there. Made that out of marble. You know, very, very impressive. Okay. Now, in class, I ask you guys, what does these names come from? Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello. And if the first thing that pops in your head, or if it was popping in your head when I was seeing the names, um... Yeah, the Ninja Turtles. They are named after the four top Renaissance men. Um, if that's the way that helps you remember who the Renaissance men are, I'm all for that. I'm like, yeah, cool. But um, if you've never heard of Ninja Turtles, now you know who they are. So hopefully you'll remember those names. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello. Uh, that way it can help you out in the future. You just never know. Maybe it might be on a test. So again, because of the Black Death, the people realize, you know what? This whole old thinking that the king is like a related to God or he was chosen by God. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. That, no. No. So the whole notion of kings and queens kind of like, yeah, we'll still have them, but we're not going to like bow down to them like how our ancestors did. You know, my father, grandfather, great grandfather did. No, because that's stupid. You know, um, to think that they're all powerful and things like that when they're really just people. You know. So a lot of city states became independent. They started to take care of themselves, started raising their own armies and having their own set up, setting up their own government, things like that. Um, Milan, Venice, Florence, they expanded their territories. You know, they basically became like um, hubs for an example of like, hey, you can grow too. You know, you can be like us. Now, Italian port cities um, started becoming profitable again. Okay. Uh, again, the Crusades, um, trade, you know, again, because cities now are making money, now they have money for trade. And because the plague is now over, trade is starting to pick back up, and people have money, so things are getting back rolling again. Now, there are some famous Italian families that sprang up. The Visconti, the Forza, and Medici, Medici sorry about that. Okay, so one of these families in particular is going to come in um, later on to play a significant role on a, a lesson. Okay, but this guy, Niccolo Machiavelli, he wrote this book called The Prince, and he's talking about politics and power and things like that. And basically, he talks about how to acquire power and to keep political power. You know, he talks about what a person should and should not do um, and things like that. And one of the things he talks about mainly is how the old way of thinking, how, oh, this is the way it should be, how it should work because it worked in the past. He says, get that out. Get that out of your head. That old way of thinking that, oh, the king is this and this and that. No, toss that. Okay. That's old school thinking. It's irrelevant now. People don't believe it. So why are you still going to try to beat that into people's brains? It doesn't work. People figured it out. Move on. 
Okay. Um, he said that the morals has little to do with politics, but also that um, the ruler should, in a sense, have morals. Look at what's best for the people. Forget about yourself. Because if the people are not happy, the people are going to overthrow you. You know, people realize that, you know, again, you're not some powerful God. You're not related to God in any way. So you're just a man. You can be overthrown. You can be killed. Okay, nothing makes you special except the title. And the title can be taken away. Okay. But basically also he says in his book is that um, the attitude towards power based on human nature, which is self-centeredness. He says that people only look after themselves. It's human nature. It's in our blood. Again, there's a thing called nature and nurture. Nature is something natural, things like that. So something that you're you're basically born with inside, that's um, nature. Nurture is the way you were raised. And he's, and he's not talking about that. He's not talking about how you were raised. He's talking about the internal mechanism in your head and your soul and things like that, that we humans are self-centered. We only think about ourselves. Again, he talks about how leaders should act on the state and not about themselves. Get your ego out of the way. Stop thinking, oh, how people are going to look at me. How how is this going to affect me? Forget that. Think about the people. And lastly, one of my most fa favorite parts of his whole book, he talks about to do good when necessary and do evil. Oh, yeah. Do good when possible. I'm sorry. Do good when possible. So anything you can have a, ch a chance to do good, do it. Do it. But only be evil if necessary. If everything else fails, okay, you're left with little to no options left. Go for it. But that's only after you exhausted every other option. Okay? So again, do good when possible. Anytime you can. Do good. And evil, it should, it should be left on the table, but that should be a last resort. That should be the last thing you should do. And that's if your hand is forced and there's no other options that you were given and no other options that are available to you. Then do that. So we come to your question. Do you believe that Machiavelli, uh, do you believe with Machiavelli that it's human nature for people to be self-centered? I want you to really think about this. Think about it. Self-centeredness. Meaning you think of yourself before other people. Okay? Now remember, don't think about oh how someone was raised, how their, how their childhood was, was, things like that. Get that out of your mentality get that out of your thoughts think of he's saying when you're born it's inside of you are we self-centered people are we born that way where we only think about ourselves if it became down to you and me you would choose you and i would choose me what do you think Okay, so again, it should not be simple, oh, no, no, because, you know, someone's mom and dad could have taught them, no, no, get get that out of the way. It's an easy thing to go to, um, to uh, nurture. It's easy to go that path. No, think na natural, nature, human nature. Are we self-centered? Okay, so, okay, gave you the writing prompt. Um, tell me what you think. Okay, so pause the video if you're still writing. But we're moving on in three, two, one. Now we come to the exit ticket. So remember, pick one of these questions to answer. Um, after what happened with the Black Death, was the Renaissance bound to happen? Why, why not? Do you think that the Renaissance was going to happen? You know, because of the Black Death, thing like that? Or do you think that... Um, was a fluke, 
you know, or you think that people would have been like, you know what, we should go back to the way it was, how life was, because we know that, you know, that type of life. You know, do you think that the Renaissance was going to happen with or without the Black Death? People would have snapped and said, you know what, we, we deserve better. You know, so what do you think? That's one question. Second one, what are some possible meanings when Machiavelli said, do good when possible, evil if necessary? So think of some, some scenarios where that would play out. Okay. And lastly, what are two differences between Middle Age art and Renaissance art? Okay. So you may have to go back to that, um, that slide if you can't remember the pictures. And you can pause the pictures and look at them and see what are two differences. Okay. So uh, once you finish the exit ticket, you are done for this class. Uh, hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, but that's it. All right. So you guys take care and you be safe.